What they're arguing now is that um, he did the false bookkeeping with the intent to violate this New York law. That way they can say, this is all a New York thing, really, mm -hmm. which permits, which prohibits uh, promoting a candidacy by unlawful means, and the unlawful means is the Federal Election Commission or Federal Election Campaign Act violation. So it all comes down, the toothpick that this whole big house is built on comes down to uh, a federal campaign finance law violation. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here with Chief Political Correspondent Byron York. And Byron, one of the last outstanding items in the Trump trial, by the time this airs, it will have been public already, is to receive the final copy of the instructions that Judge Juan Merchant will read to the jury mm -hmm. at the end of the trial. Uh, are those turning out to be good for Trump? No, they're going to be bad for Trump. <laughs> that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Mm -hmm. um, there have been uh, the, uh, after the the testimony ended and both sides rested, uh, the two sides met in court, not with a jury, but just met in court with a judge, uh, and they went over some of the issues. And uh, basically, the Trump people kind of lost everything. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted uh, the judge to tell the jury that uh, paying a, a non-disclosure agreement, or hush money, is not actually illegal. Mm -hmm. And he said, nah, you, a bunch of people said that in the trial, no need for me to say it. They wanted to talk, the judge, to say something about what the phrase, for the, in, for the purpose of influencing an election, means. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, nah. And they admitted in court, they all sides admitted that it was super compli complicated, right? Mm -hmm. But might as well let the jury just kind of figure it out. Because remember, they, the judge wouldn't let uh, the uh, defense's expert, a former chairman of the Federal Election Commission, wouldn't let him testify on what, for the purpose of influencing an election, actually meant. And finally, there's the famous mythical other crime mm -hmm. that Trump is uh, uh, accused of intending to commit, not committing, intending to commit, um, after he falsified the the bookkeeping. And basically, the, defense, the, the prosecution has never come out in front of the jury and said, this is what we think that other crime is. So he's, he's charged with, uh, with intent to defraud, falsifying the records with the further intent to commit this crime, and this is what it is. They never said that. They've, they've basically talked about two or three things that would qualify as a, as a crime. Mm -hmm. And what the Trump people wanted was for the prosecution to say, okay, this is the other crime that he's accused of committing, and you, the jury, have to decide whether you think he's guilty of intending to commit this other crime. Uh, didn't happen. So now it's a, it's a multiple choice test. It's a smorgasbord. You can, the jury can pick A, this, this sounds good, this extra crime sounds good, or B, or C, and they don't have to be unanimous in deciding uh, what the crime is. So if you're a juror and you think A is, that's, that's what he intended to do. He intended to commit A. And then the other jury says, no, I think he intended to commit B. And another one says, no, I think it was C. They can all vote for their own favorite and Trump's still convicted. So the jury does not have to be unanimous on what the other crime is. You've described what approximates the, the closest thing to a theory that the prosecution has put forward yeah. for this other crime is a double bank shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain this twisted right. logic, this journey from right. falsifying bookkeeping to a felony election crime? Well, uh, as you know, falsifying bookkeeping is a misdemeanor mm -hmm. with a two-year statute of limitations. This, uh, these bookkeeping changes or entries took place in 2017. So the, the uh, statute of limitations ran out in 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if it were a felony, it would be a, uh, a five-year statute of limitations. Plus, you get a bonus year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. The state of New York extended statutes of limitations by one year. So you get six years. So it took place in 2017. You could get all the way to 2023. And right under the line in 2023, mm -hmm. they indicted Trump. So they made. It. So what's their theory? The theory was um, the the misdemeanor bookkeeping uh, changes 
were made with the intent to commit another crime. Um, and then the, the prosecution never said what the other crime was, but they did offer the court four theories of what the other crime could be. Mm -hmm. And um, the other crime, they said, uh, could be a violation of a New York law which says that it's unlawful, or that, excuse me, it's, it's, it's a crime to promote a political candidacy by unlawful means. Well, now that, that requires another crime. You know, what are the unlawful means? Mm -hmm. And then they also said, well, uh, it could be a federal election commission, uh, a, a federal election campaign finance law violation. Now, a lot of experts have said, well, wait a minute, this, this is a county judge in New York. He's, excuse me, a, a county judge and a county prosecutor, Alvin Bragg for Manhattan. They're going to like enforce federal election law. Well, that'll be an issue for an appeals court to look at. Their, their answer is, yeah, we're going to do that. Um, so there was another one, a really interesting tax theory. They had a tax theory mm -hmm. that uh, you know the, this whole idea that that uh, Trump was going to repay Michael Cohen for the hush money, uh, and he was going to gross it up meaning there, he was going to raise the amount he paid him so that after Cohen paid taxes on all this, mm -hmm. that uh, he'd still have the 130000 that he had paid. He'd be fully uh, reimbursed. Well, so their theory was, well, this was actually just a reimbursement. Like if you put in for, a, you buy a plane ticket for work and then you put in and you're reimbursed for it, mm -hmm. that's not your income. You already spent for the plane ticket, okay? So you're just square with your right. employer. They said, well, no, this, <clears throat> this, uh, they, they were trying to treat this like income so he could pay taxes. So they actually conspired to pay too much in taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that makes it a felony. Um, and so there, and, and then there was another one that, that the judge actually rejected saying that basically the uh, false bookkeeping was the crime that they intended to commit when they did the false bookkeeping. It's kind of a circular argument, mm -hmm. but that was too much for the judge. Uh, so really, what they're arguing now is that um, he did the false bookkeeping with the intent to violate this New York law. That way they can say, this is all a New York thing, really, mm -hmm. which, permits, which prohibits um, promoting a candidacy by unlawful means and the unlawful means is the Federal Election Commission or Federal Election Campaign Act violation. So it all comes down, the toothpick that this whole big house is built on comes down to uh, a federal campaign finance law violation. And this judge has been very hostile to the defense, very friendly to the prosecution. So this jury may never get to hear from anyone other than the defense, right, that the Federal Election Commission did not enforce this, the Justice Department yeah. did not enforce this, yeah. and hush money is not a violation, specifically not in the view of Bradley Smith, who wasn't allowed right. to testify, not a violation right. of FEC law. Well, the judge wouldn't allow the expert, Brad Smith, mm -hmm. um, uh, to testify. And then the, the, the defense was trying to get the judge to say this. Okay, in your instructions, will you please tell them that hush money is not illegal? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, it's already been said. Uh, I don't need to say it. Now, when it comes from the judge, it has a certain weight before right. the jury. So the jury can, uh, that you can never go wrong by accepting what the judge says. Now, maybe the judge said something wrong to you, but if you're the jury, it's okay to accept what the judge says. But he's not doing that. Um, so it really looks like it's kind of an uphill climb for, uh, for the Trump defense in these uh, jury deliberations. On the other hand, I will have to say, uh, starting this trial, I absolutely assumed 100% conviction. No chance of anything else. Now, I think after we've seen all the evidence and the testimony, you know, the, there's a possibility for a hung jury. I mean, no, there's not a possibility for an acquittal, but there's a possibility for a hung jury that one or two jurors may say, you know, they just didn't prove this thing. So you think an acquittal is off the table, even though there's virtually yeah. no link between Donald Trump and the falsifying documents yeah. besides Michael yeah, Collins? Yeah, I think that's where the the blue, deep blue Manhattan jury comes into effect. Does but, Trump get a bounce from a hung jury, you think? Well, it doesn't hurt him. Right. Um, it, do, it doesn't hurt him in any way. And uh, the question now is would a conviction actually hurt him? Certainly not going to hurt him with his base Republican voters. We right. knew that. 
Um, and the question is, there is a group of voters, it's pretty small, but polls have shown that, that some of them would be open to the possibility of voting for Trump. Uh, but if he were convicted of a felony, they would have second thoughts and maybe not vote for Trump. So that's that key group. And you know, how big is it? Is it big enough that if they didn't vote for Trump, then Biden would win? Right. That's certainly the Democratic hope here. But um, there is some group that's, that might be affected by a conviction. On the other hand, you know, last year we were talking about what effect would these indictments have on Trump's mm -hmm. candidacy. Might You can't run for president under indictment, can you? You know, and then one, two, three, four indictments, uh, and it actually helped Trump in the Republican primary. So in a general election, different sort of thing, uh, the question is, will, would a conviction actually peel off some voters who might otherwise voted for Trump? Well, Byron, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, we can go on for another couple of hours. <laughs> I know we could. And yeah. <laughs> we'll have a lot to say, I guess, All after right. next week. <laughs> uh, you can get more reporting from Byron by signing up for his newsletter, Byron York's Daily Memo, at WashingtonExaminer.com.